but it kind of comes to a knowing your customer and which way you can relate to them. And then B saying, okay, I know my customer, but let me see who my other customers might be. And at the beginning stages of this, I really thought that Facebook was going to take off and be the big outlet, but it's really Instagram. Welcome to the wear wag repeat podcast. I'm Tori mystic as a dog mom lifestyle expert blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. In this episode, I had the pleasure of talking with Angela Pantalone, the founder of the canine culture hub WAG Central. In just three years, she's created a business that caters to all things dog for the proactive pet parent. Like many of us, her business was inspired by her own dog, Lulu. And with the same enthusiasm that our dogs go after their favorite treat, Angela became obsessed with all things related to dog play, training, care, and enrichment. Learn about how she makes it all work with the help of an amazing staff and what makes her most excited, like seeing a dog run with their owner from their car up to her door. Make sure you listen for her story about how an Instagram video she did the morning of this interview almost immediately resulted in a new daycare client signup. If you're not getting new customers through your Instagram account, you might feel like you're actually losing money. Managing your account is taking valuable time away from your business, and let's be honest, it's taking time away from your dog. Your pet has so many quirky delights, and it really sucks to feel like you're missing them because you're always staring at your phone. Let me show you how to manage your Instagram account in less time, get better results, and find more time to do what you really love. In my online course, Instagram Strategy for the Pet Obsessed, aka Inspo, I'll teach you how you can create a posting schedule and stick with it, proven strategies to boost engagement, how to work with influencers or even become one, plus tech trainings that reveal hidden tricks inside the app. This might be the only Instagram course that tells you to spend less time on Instagram. That's because it's created by a dog mom. And I know all we really want at the end of the day is to spend more time with our puppies. Go to wearwagrepeat.com slash inspo to learn more. Hurry up because I have some really great bonuses that are expiring soon. That's wearwagrepeat.com slash I-N-S-P-O. In 2017, Angela Pantalone opened WAG Central, a hub of canine culture. She does it all. Doggy daycare, boarding, grooming, veterinary services, swimming, self-wash, a biscuit cafe, and retail. It's all focused on nurturing the connection between pups and their humans. WAG Central won second place in 2019 in the America's Coolest Stores Contest from Pets Plus Magazine and the Retailer of Excellence Award for Multi-Service Retailer Provider in 2020 from Pet Business Magazine. A former teacher, Angela continues to share her knowledge as a business consultant. Among the many topics she advises and speaks on are starting a dog-centric operation from scratch, including the purchase and construction of space, layout, developing profit centers, branding, marketing, and social media. She's had a lot of success using Instagram to market her business. Hey, Angela. Hey, Tori. I'm really excited to talk to you and about all things WAG Central. You have a lot going on. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to be asked to be part of your podcast. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, you know, I, I think looking at, at WAG Central and all the things that you do, um, I'm really excited to have you on the show because obviously you're an expert in so many different areas of running a successful pet business. Why I don't try. we start? <laughs> you are, you are. Why don't we start off? Can you tell us the story about why you started WAG Central? Sure. So um, I taught kindergarten for about 10 years. And one of the best compliments I got while I was teaching 
five and six year olds was, hey, this girl could teach a dog how to read. Um, I ended up staying home, raising three children. And it was probably about, I'm going to say, Wags in its third year. So it was probably about five years ago that I was walking my own dog, Tallulah, which we call Lulu. Um, she and I were in the yard and it was a very cold November day. And we kind of looked at each other and said, hey, why are we out here where it's cold? Because we're both sort of like princesses. So <laughs> I thought to myself, I wonder if there's a place that I could walk her indoors. And I learned very quickly that was a ridiculous idea because dogs are very fight or flight. You take away their flight and they could possibly fight. And, you know, Tallulah is a little cavalier King Charles. So I started looking for places that I could take her just for some recreation. So, you know, just like every other place, you've got your regular dog parks. But again, she's a little girl. Um, she does need some exercise, which is why I was walking her in the first place. And then again, it wasn't combating the whole thing about being cold. So then I started looking into local day doggy daycares. And even though we had some options, it just wasn't what I really wanted for her. Um, Lulu at the time. Um, so, you know, I, I was also at a juncture in my life that I needed something new. So I started really thinking about um, how back in the day when I was a teacher that I liked the structure of school. I liked how schools work. And I thought, you know, how about a school for dogs? And that's kind of how the whole thing blossomed. Um, I'm located in Connecticut, um, but I did realize that I needed to kind of venture outside of Connecticut to see really good um, dog care. So I kind of traveled the country. Um, I spent some time in Washington State and Oregon and Colorado and Texas where, um, you know, they're just a little bit more forward in the way that they treat dogs. I um, spent times at different facilities. I became a dog trainer myself in a 350 um, hour training class. And I found a great property in Stratford, Connecticut. It's 15,000 square feet. And I GC the job into making it what I wanted it to be, which I call now the hub of canine culture. Um, it's not very foo-foo dog or bougie dog. It's more about recreation. It's about healthiness. It's about getting exercise. It's about doggy daycare and having this place be the second home for, for dogs because so many people needed exactly what I needed, um, a place to bring their dog, but also somewhat the convenience of it. And uh, now we're in our third year and we're doing well. I love that your idea kind of evolved over time, you know, like your first idea you realized wasn't super viable and you kind of refined um, and, and figured out what it was that you wanted and, and what you could provide uh, by checking out these other doggy daycare facilities. So I, I have a question. When you were traveling the country and going to these other facilities, did you just call them up and say like, hey, can I shadow your dogs for a day or how did that <laughs> conversation go? So there were a few places that I did. And um, with that, it was friends of friends or people I was meeting. As I, as I was opening my facility, you know, I was meeting people. Um, the guy from Houston who put in my central vac, he said, oh, you've got to go check out the vacuum system at this facility. And then when I would check out a website and I would be like, okay, I'm going to come and visit. I'm not competition, right? The, their place is in California. Um, I worked with um, a dog, an indoor dog park in Portland. Oregon. Um, so I did make some calls like that. But I also just jumped in and, and at other places and said, hey, I'm look, I just moved to the area. I would like to bring my dog here. So I kind of did the whole thing. You know, I was that secret shopper at some places and got tours and kind of got the idea. But I also, you know, was totally legit at other places saying, hey, I'm opening up the same kind of place. Um, you know, my friend, you know, installed your kennels. I'm going to be using him. Can I see what you've got going on? And I have to say one thing about this industry is people are really really happy to share. They, they, you know, this is a, this is a great industry. And I even know from having other doggy daycares around mine that, you know, there's enough business for all of us. Dogs are the new kids and everybody wants something really good for their dogs. You're right. Uh, there, there's plenty of room for everyone. Uh, and I think everyone has like their own, their own little niche and the pet industry is something like $80 billion a year in the United States. So there, there is room for all of us to kind of do our own little thing. Um, I saw that you recently spoke on a panel at Global Pet Expo and it was called Want to Succeed? Be Different. And it was all about creating unique outside of the box ideas and business models. Um, and I, that's kind of like the perfect segue <laughs> here yeah. um, about, you know, 
being a little bit different, um, you know, even though there's different doggy daycares in Connecticut, I'm sure something about WAG Central is different than the other one that's, you know, a couple miles away from you. So can you maybe give us a couple of examples of what you talked about on that panel um, about how pet businesses can be different? Sure. So I was also, I was on the panel with um, Pat Mitchell, I'm sorry, Pam Mitchell. She is the editor of Pets Plus Magazine. Um, Two others were on the panel with me. Nancy Gwynn, she owns um, a bunch of stores, mostly retail stores. She's going to be Diving her, her uh, diving into the doggy daycare business soon, but um, she owns retail stores, so she had an angle on how she's different in the way that she reaches out. I also uh, spoke with um, Lab. He owns Bar K, which is in um, where is that? It's in Kansas City, uh-huh. and his, you know his concept is completely different. He's got a big dog park with a restaurant and the bar in the middle of it all, so you can kind of see where the different where the differences came in. And then I was in the middle of all of this talking about, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a dog trainer. I know what, how I know how to read dog behavior. I understand how that's all going to go. I'm not a restaurateur. I'm not, retail is just a small part of what I do. Um, but I do find that, you know, the, the, the whole crux of what I was doing is bringing into the fun sort of daycare concept of this. Again, I was a teacher. So I look back at all the fun activities I did as a kindergarten teacher. It's not always the best thing in the world to do is pursue personified dogs, but dogs still, we, we have fun. We want to celebrate our dogs on Valentine's day. We want to give them a Christmas gift. We want to have a keychain with our dog's name on it. We want our dogs to maybe do a little bit of art, you know, and have something fun to post out on social and, and, and whatever. So I kind of talked about, um, how I set up the sort of daycare fun kind of calendar for my, for my business. I talked about a little bit of the construction and the smart ways to do things so that, you know, dogs are accounted for and that we can keep an eye on all of these dogs and make sure they eat and a little bit of that kind of protocol. I also talked about, um, our swimming pool. I talked about our dog training classes, but I did talk also about, you know, getting the customer in and showing the customer that, Hey, just about everything you might possibly need for your dog is housed right here. And if it's not, we could figure out a way to do this because we have a concierge level of service. You know, when you stay at a nice hotel, you've got someone who says, hey, you should go here today or don't go between 11 and 12 because it's so busy at this particular time. And that's what we try to do at WAG Central. I want I want clients to know that they can easily get a hold of us. Um, and I think that's basically the crux of what I was saying when I was speaking on panel. It was kind of like fly from the seat of my, <laughs> fly from the seat of my pants. But um, I really hope that the participants got something out of it. Yeah, I think that makes so much sense. And I, um, you know, what was kind of like going off in my head while you were talking is that a lot of the daycare facilities around me, um, including the one that I use, um, I just kind of drop the dogs off and then I leave. And, Mm -hmm. um, and they do sometimes do fun little crafts. Like they'll make paw print ornaments and at Mm -hmm. Halloween, they always dress the dogs up and take pictures, but there's not a lot of opportunity for me to get involved in anything there. And I think that it sounds like what kind of sets you apart. Um, looking at your Instagram feed, it looks like you really do kind of get the owners involved. Um, and, with having the training and the veterinary expertise and like the concierge kind of help, you really get the pet parents involved a lot more than I think other daycares that I see do. Right. And it really comes down to the owner. Some are exactly like you were, like you're describing, but you know, some of them want a little extra knowledge. Maybe they want to know about giving their dog CBD. So we'll have a panel on that. Um, I connect with lots of different businesses, which is a great thing for others who might be looking to start a daycare business to do. Um, we have a pizza place that loves to have us out on their deck. So, you know, we have those um, mostly in the summer months so we can get pets, uh, the pets that we have coming to our facility to come with their parents and have pizza and get to meet other owners. Um, I also so try to do that socially when we have holidays. We have photo booths set up. So right now we've popped up our um, our St. Patrick's Day <laughs> photo booth. And when people come in at the end of the day to pick up their pet, they can take a picture with their dog. We'll take a picture for them on their phone and our on our phone. And again, that's kind of leading up into our Instagram kind of chat of this conversation. Yes. But um, 
but yeah, I try to think about all of those, right? Because you know, we don't have a lot of time. Um, and if we have children at home and other demands, then we probably have less and less time for our dog. But the opportunities are there if people want them, if they want to get educated, if they want to dress their dog up, if they want to come to a doggy fashion show, all this kind of stuff is kind of going on in the background. And I try to orchestrate all of that. So there are those opportunities for other pet owners to meet. I think that's so fun. Um, my, my sister, she was living in, um, Alexandria, Virginia for a while and they have such a cute little town and and like main street there. And her local dog shop would host like singles mixers. Uh, and I know the, the owner of the shop, my sister was friends with her. She would always be like pushing all the single customers to come to these mixers. And it was just like a nice way to, to, you know, create that sense of community that, is hard to come by these days when everything is so uh, virtual and digital and all that kind of stuff. So um, I I think it's really fun that you do all that. Um, But (laughs) speaking of the digital aspect Mm -hmm. of things, um, we're here to talk about Instagram a little bit today uh, and how you use Instagram to engage with your customers. So you talked about the photo booths and and helping them take pictures or encouraging them to take their own. Um, how how do you use that to really connect with them through social media, or do you you know tell them how to tag you or anything like that? It seems that sometimes even my customers teach me on the tagging <laughs> part of things. So truth be told, truth be told, I will be fifty this year, and I was more of a Facebook person. I understand Facebook really well. I find that people my age like Facebook. So when we were opening the business, um, I, and I have three teenagers, which you know, well, you'll see how this all comes to light. Um, yeah, my marketing company said, "Oh, let's start an Instagram page too," and I was kind of like, "Ah, oh, Instagram, I really don't know it." I think I know my customer base, but um, I have to say Instagram is in so many ways, so amazing. I think we actually have more followers um, on Instagram than we do on Facebook. And, you know, Instagram is just a quick way to tell a story because you're looking at a picture. I find that even though maybe we have 17, almost 1800 followers on Instagram, that we have so many other people who are also looking who might not like things or maybe who are following, following something that we have as a hashtag. It is kind of crazy the way it, that it really works. Um, and not to discount Facebook, I find like there's also a lot of engagement on Facebook and maybe more people make comments on Facebook than so on Instagram. But it kind of comes to A, knowing your customer and which way you can relate to them. And then B, saying, okay, I know my customer, but let me see who my other customers might be. And at the beginning stages of this, I really thought that Facebook was going to take off and be the big outlet, but it's really Instagram. Yeah. I I mean, there's just so many um, dogs on Instagram and I think people are having accounts just for their dogs. Um, Whereas on Facebook, you don't really have dog accounts. It's always like the people. Um, So Instagram seems to be a very popular dog hangout. You said it. And you know, what's so interesting is that so many of the dogs that are my clients at WAG Central, their parents have an Instagram page and they have an Instagram page. So the sharing becomes absolutely amazing. Um, one of our dogs, Finny the awesome, Finn the Aussie dog, he has, I'm going to say at least 2000 followers and he tags us on a great day that he's had at WAG Central. So what do we do later? We see that he's tagged, um, that he's tagged us and we ask Add that to our story. And then later on, we can see, wow, all these people saw our story and maybe people will follow us there. But the interesting part of all of this too is, yeah, you don't have to really strive to have 17, 1800 followers on Instagram. You really don't need a whole lot of followers. At the end of the day, I know that WAG Central is really a local business. Um, It is Stratford, Connecticut. So as much as people could like pictures, it doesn't matter that somebody in Canada is really liking my picture because they're not necessarily going to be my client. So I think a little bit of advice there is, you know, don't get discouraged. You know, really what you want to do is get your local 
your local um, customers to be able to come to enjoy to see what's going on, but also take advantage of the fact that hey, you've got you've got social media, you've got content right there in your facility. Um, it's not stock photo; it's really great stuff you can put out there. You know, like a swimming dog or a dog that's taking a rest or a dog that's eating a woofle or having a, an ice cream social. Um, people love dogs. It's really it's actually it's easy peasy, really good content. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, so there's all these dog photos and dog videos, and I, I think you hit the nail on the head too. That it, you know, so many people get discouraged because they're not getting thousands of followers or hundreds of likes, but it might not really matter depending on on what kind of business you have um, and what your goals are. So it's a, it's really important to kind of know like what the point <laughs> of yes. your Instagram account is. Yes. And sometimes I, I have to say some things are kind of pointless. Point, you know, you think are maybe a little bit pointless. You're just sticking out a picture of a cute, uh, maybe a Shiba Inu. But then, a, then a page of Shiba Inus will pick up your picture, and you'll be your dog will be the Shiba Inu of the day. It'll be your yes. client. So <laughs> you say later on, like, "Wow, that's really cool. How in the world did that happen?" But at the end of the day, it may not translate to dollars or more business. But you know, it just you know a little notch in your belt is always fun. Yeah, um, it's it's nice to have a mix of those different kinds of things. Right. But an interesting thing, and I think it might be a question that you were thinking of asking me, and it's just in my head right now. This mor- Just this morning, I, I posted a picture of Chico, who is one of our Boston Terrier clients. And Chico loves to swim. And, you know, Boston Terriers really aren't built for swimming. You know, they've got short little bodies, they've got short little legs. And sometimes when you put, sometimes when you put a dog that's shaped that way, that has that body type into the pool, he's not really having fun. But <laughs> Chico is having a blast. And I I posted that out and you know a good experience from that is within minutes somebody sent uh, went to our website and we have a, a call to action on our website where you could post in um, and ask a question or ask to be you know contacted and it was someone who has a five-month-old Boston Terrier puppy who's looking to become um, you know looking for some things to do for recreation with the puppy so my puppy nursery manager was able to reach right out and I believe that puppy is going to be in in a few days so I didn't think about that when I posted Chico this morning. I just thought, oh my gosh, Chico was having the time of his life. And I did the old cute, like, this is the best video you're going to see today. You're welcome. You know, just kind of in that, you know, haughty toddy kind of tone. <laughs> but hey, it, I didn't expect that to happen, but that works. So some of the things you might not expect, it's um, like just when you're putting it, something cute out there. It can have almost instant impact on your business like it did today. That's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. So with your Instagram, do you, um, do you usually just kind of post live in the moment or do you plan out some kind of a content calendar in advance? Oh, I wish I was a better planner. Um, <laughs> and I think that's actually why I was such a good kindergarten teacher because, you know, back in the day, you know, we might be working on the letter A. So I had your ba- the basic thing, but then I would be, I'd go to, I'd be driving to school and I'd be like, oh my God, aardvark starts with A. Let's do an aardvark thing today, you know, and totally fly by the seat of my pants. So no, I am really not a good planner. Um, obviously I, I've made it this far in my life and functioned, but, but I'm not a great planner, but you know what? But I will say that for anybody who is a little more type A than me, which I always strive to be, um, it makes it very easy on Instagram to be able to plan, even more easy on Facebook to be able to plan your posts. Mm -hmm. And um, if you're that kind of person and you just take a few minutes, it's super simple. Or if you're even luckier than I am, I used to joke about my my teenagers, you know, just to have a teenager in your house. They might not be nice about helping. And uh, there was a time I even wrote a blog post about, you know, why do we have lawyers on retainer? We need teenagers on retainer. They're the ones that get us out of half of the problems we get ourselves into with electronics these days. But a teenager could really probably be the best, the best thing in the world for you. So I just know even at this juncture in my business and at this time of the year that a lot of high school seniors are reaching out to me to do internships. And obviously they see my business and they're reaching out because they want to. But, um, you know, anyone in this business, if they might need a little kick in the butt with with social media or Instagram, it might be something to keep in mind if you have interns looking into your business or mm-hmm. checking you out right now, because you can get 30, I think about 30 hours of service, these kids need something to do to be able to, you know, get their last few credits of being a senior. And uh, 
they certainly can help you and show you and maybe be nicer to you than your own child might be. <laughs> I can only speak for myself, but there probably are people out there who know exactly what I'm talking about. Like, oh, mom, all right, I'll show you again. You know? <laughs> I think that's great advice. And that's, this is the perfect time of year to, um, to be looking for, for interns. Yeah. Um, so, um, so you obviously are doing a lot of things. Do you, and, and you, and you're very spontaneous, which is a wonderful quality. I think with dogs, you almost have to be because there's a lot of unexpected things that are going to happen. Um, Absolutely. But do you have like a, a standard kind of day to day schedule or, framework that you work by? Like, how do you achieve that work-life balance? Because you are offering so many things in your business and there's so many dogs who are demanding your attention, but you also have your own family and your own dogs and everything. Um, how do you figure all that out? Yeah. You know, at the, I don't think what I, I, I think when I opened WAG, I really didn't take the time to think at how crazy and overwhelming it was going to be. And um, it is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week business. You know, I'm talking a lot about doggy daycare right here, but we have overnight boarding and a person that stays overnight, you know, weekends, holidays, um, you know, uh, any, any, any moment where, you know, we don't close where there's always somebody there and there's always dog care going on. So it, it, it could really be overwhelming. When I first opened, I did a lot of the overnight simply because we didn't have a lot of clients at the time. Um, once it built, I finally had a, had a point where I could let go a little bit. I know how to work every single aspect of my business and I know exactly how it was constructed. I know how to use everything. So it makes me a really good teacher to whoever I hire. And I've gotten to a point right now where I've got really good managers in place. I've got really good dog trainers in place. And I really give, I try not to micromanage. So I give my managers and all the people that work for me quite a quite long leash, huh, not to be green in the dog <laughs> boat, but you know, make Making decisions and being smart. Um, you know, because we have dogs with us so long, we often see dogs with, you know, medical conditions. You know, I had one yesterday that I was like, oh, I think he burst a blood vessel in his eye. And, you know, I was able to take a quick picture and send it over to the owner, but any of my managers could have done that. And, you know, she just said, oh yeah, he gets those all the time. And I thought, okay, good. I'm glad it's something that didn't happen here on our watch. But also if it, if it did, I would have the outlet to take care of it um, because I have a vet tech on staff. So it's, it really is planning and figuring out, um, you know, we throw a lot of things out there uh, against the wall to see if they stick. Um, but, you know, honestly, I do spend my day, uh, I, I have a regular day, I get my kids up and out of the house, I try to exercise every morning, it just makes me feel so much better. I am a Peloton junkie, I play tennis. I get myself to wag at least four times a week. Um, and I usually, when I'm there, it's, I, I'll say to myself, Oh, I'm going to stay two or three hours. And I end up staying till seven o'clock. But, um, <laughs> But, you know, I do spend a lot of time there. I do want the people that work for me, even though there are managers in place, to know that I'm there and I'm present. Uh, at the end of the day, they're really answering to me. Um, I do prefer to have my managers be the bad guys <laughs> while they're there. But, you know, I do pay them to be the bad guys. Um, <laughs> and I have weekly meetings with my managers so that I can catch up on everything. Sometimes we have impromptu meetings and it's just a text message. Um, I have... Uh, Every other week I do meetings with my daycare leads. So I have an idea of who's coming to daycare, what their gripes are, who the great workers are, who they want on their team and who they don't. And, you know, doggy daycare is no joke. You have, you know, maybe 60, 70 dogs in a room all separated, but all the people working really need to act as a team because anything can happen at any moment. Um, you know, we have a lot of different training protocols in place to make sure things don't happen, but, you know, meeting with them to make sure that's happening is good. And I, I do find that since I've owned the business, now that I'm at year three, I can pull back a little bit more. Um, I don't know what I would do without my phone and the fact that we could take video and pictures and all of that. I mean, technology is amazing. And uh, sidebar, anybody opening a business should really think about how they can keep it where, you know, that you are identifying with your clients and everybody by your phone and just think about how your phone has, has evolved in the years you've had it and where it's going to go in the next 10 years. So keeping that in mind, and at least from a business perspective, it's like, let's not forget about this phone, this little mini computer that everybody has in their pocket. But it's maybe also be, a, you know, a really good leader. It makes me be present even when I'm not on site. And yeah, I do find that right now I'm looking into other, um, 
locations. And I think simply because I've got this one hub down pat, I can start thinking about how I want to grow and where I want to be in the next few years. That's so exciting. You have a lot of energy. Yeah. So a friend of mine, Shauna uh, Shug, she has, uh, she runs uh, women in the pet care industry. It's um, just a group of women. She posted out the other day, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? And I thought about it and I think I would probably say 25. I I don't know. (laughs) If I didn't know I was going to be 50 this year, I probably would guess about that. So yeah, I mean, this has brought me a lot of joy and it's something I'm really passionate about. I, I love love the clients. I love when new dogs come in. I love seeing new puppies. I love seeing growth when a puppy who might have been really anxious and scared and kind of cowering in a corner in daycare, when I come back a week later and I see that same dog running and playing and and enjoying himself in daycare and seeing that growth. I love seeing dogs get out of their cars with their owners and they're dragging their owners up the stairs to (laughs) get into the facility, you know, and people share these stories. And I actually even see them later on on Instagram where they tag us, you know, a picture of a dog in a car saying, I'm going to daycare. And you're like, wow, I know where you're going. You're coming to my place. And yeah, my place, I, it was just a field of dreams. I just kind of woke up one day and you, you heard the story before, but to see what it's evolved into is really crazy and, and super fun. I think in a pretty short amount of time too. I think that to have built all of this in three years is really amazing. I built it having a five-year plan. Um, I really did. I said, you know, I need something to do for the next five years. And honestly, it's based on my poor son. He is a sophomore in college. I'm sorry, in high school. And I keep thinking that, you know, he needs to stay in this high school, you know, um, and when he's graduating as a senior, maybe I can get rid of this big house and kind of downsize and travel a little bit more. So maybe more me time. Um, I think when I originally started this five-year plan, because now I'm in year two and a half of it, you know, that's why the growth and, and some of the other things I mentioned are coming about. But I keep saying like, yeah, I, I can either grow this business or sell it or, you know, but I don't know if that same passion and energy will come from someone else, or at least that's how I'm feeling now. I love how my children work there. They've got a lot of passion and energy to be there. Um, and I love the workers that I have because it's the same thing, you know, even interviewing some some of these young people, you see that they're so excited and they love dogs and this is their passion. And, you know, it really, it really comes forth. And I think a lot of our customers and clients see that. Um, and I think that's why we've grown in popularity. Yeah. I, we're, I think we're so lucky to be alive now because there's just so many opportunities in the pet industry. I think it's like grown more than ever. And there's even, there's more things to do now than ever before. If you're super passionate about dogs. Right. You know, when I was a kid, we had a dog, but it was just a dog, right? The dog was outside. It kind of hung out in a, it kind of roamed the neighborhood. <laughs> you know, right. it was completely different. Ernie was actually a girl, but that's a funny story. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but no, dogs are really beloved companions. They fill so many needs and, you know, they can't always talk and advocate for themselves. So a lot of the clients feel that they're the voice of their dog. Um, sometimes they're wrong and I, but I don't challenge them on that because I understand dogs language so very well, but, but people really, really, you know, their dogs are number one. And, you know, we embrace that at Wax Central. It's just, and it's easy to do. And we just give them what they need. Right. It's, I mean, who can argue with that? Like, just let, you know, let the dogs live their best lives and support the people who are helping them do that. So, um, Angela, tell everyone where they can find Wag Central and where they can find you and like you on Instagram too. Well, you can find us just about everywhere. A simple Google search of WAG Central will bring up our facility in Stratford, Connecticut. We are on Facebook at WAG Central. We are on Instagram at WAG Central. We're also on Instagram in a few other ways. Um, I'm on Instagram as WAG Pants, as my last name is Pantalone. So, um, and a fun thing about our last name, it means pants in many languages. So we (laughs) always kind of reap on that. Um, One of my dog's name is Chance Pants. Um, My dog Lulu just started a, um, a her own Facebook page simply because I you know she's a middle-aged Cavalier King Charles and I feel like that um, that middle-aged dogs aren't necessarily getting the um, the praise that they need so um, she is at <laughs> Wagalulu um, W-A-G-L-O-O-L-O-U so I love she- it 
on. And then we also have WAG Central Dog Training. We have WAG Central Grooming. So our groomer, you know, takes beautiful pictures of the dogs that she grooms. Our dog trainer likes to show a lot of the fun things that are going on in training. Um, there was even a time when someone said, if you type in Angela Dogs Connecticut, that I come up. So that's kind <laughs> of fun too. Um, I better not do anything wrong or, <laughs> or get I can't the imagine. <laughs> I can't imagine you'd do anything wrong. I mean, just keep posting dogs and, you know, no, no one can be upset about that. But thank you so much for, for being on the show here today. I really had a great time talking to you. Thank you so much, Tori. What did you like most about this episode? Find me on Instagram at Mystic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog-inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wherewagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.